AP Biology, Chapter 35, Plant Anatomy and Function, Part 1. Your learning goal is to describe plant structures and their functions. I'm going to try a uh, different method of uh, having you guys take notes here. Um, anything in a green box, I would like you to copy into your notes. Now keep in mind you can organize your notes any way you want. You can make tables and other things. We'll be practicing with concept maps and Venn diagrams in class. The basic anatomy of a plant is a root, shoot, and leaves. The root has two parts, two basic parts. We have a root tip. This is the place where we have rapidly dividing cells for uh, growth. And we also have root hairs to increase surface area for absorption of minerals and nutrients that we'll talk about in future chapters. The shoot is also called the stem, so uh, those words are used interchangeably. There's nodes, internodes, apical buds, which means at the tips, axillary buds on the sides, and flowers that we'll talk about in details. And the leaves have veins in them. These are going to be used for transport of sugars and water, as well as minerals. Okay, now a little more details about uh, shoots. Shoots consist of stems, leaves, and buds. So if there are things coming off the shoots, of course. Uh, the stem has something called a node on it. A node is a point where the leaves are attached. And if you want to draw yourself a quick little sketch here, right there is the attachment point called a node. Inter means between. So internode is the stem portion between the nodes. And that's located here. So this is called an internode. And this is called a node. The buds are growth from a shoot. Terminal means at the end. Uh, and it means the same thing as apical. And that means at the tip of the plant. Plants basically grow from the tips. They grow from the tips up and from the tips down. The side parts of the plant usually only grow sideways, if at all. Axillary buds are the um, buds at the nodes on the stem. So over here we have an axillary bud. This is the apical bud. And this is an axillary bud. All right, here we have some modified shoots, stolons on strawberries. Uh, they're sideways kind of um, shoots. Uh, potatoes, oddly enough, are a type of shoot. They're not actually a root. And same thing with onions. These are the roots of an onion. The onion itself is actually a modified stem. All right, roots. Roots anchor the plant in soil, absorb minerals, water, store food. Let's write that down. It's in a green box. We have uh, three types of roots. Fibrous roots are kind of a mat of roots. They're kind of spread out all over the place. And that's typical of monocots. Remember, monocots like corn have veins side by side. Tap roots have one large vertical root. Think like a carrot. That would be a great example of a tap root. And that's uh, typical of dicots. Here we have a tap root on a weed. Break off the top part of the weed. There's still starch in that root. Break it down for sugars and use that energy to make more, uh, more of the plant. Root hairs are the last part of a root. We have the um, increase of surface area for absorption of water and minerals. So that's something you should know about the root hairs. Increase the surface area. All right, function of the leaves, of course, is photosynthesis. We're going to be making energy in the process of combining carbon dioxide together to make sugars. So CHO means carbohydrate production, and that starts with sugars, glucose. We also are going to be doing gas exchange through the little holes at the bottom of the leaf called stomates. And transpiration is also going to occur in the leaves. Uh, we're going to have evaporation of water, and more is going to be brought up by adhe adhesion and cohesion to the xylem within the stem. Here we have simple versus compound leaves. Um, we have uh, a simple leaf which is just one leaf, but a compound leaf has a whole bunch of uh, leaves attached to a, um, a single side stem. All right, this should be a review, so we don't really have to write this down. Uh, remember the cuticle is the outer covering called a waxy, uh, it's a waxy covering that prevents water loss. We have the epidermis here, which doesn't have very many chloroplasts, no chloroplasts, and it's basically the skin of the plant, just like the skin of your body, it protects from disease. The mesophyll is the important part of the plant where we do photosynthesis. This whole area here is mesophyll. Palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll both have the most number of chloroplasts, and if you don't remember that from previous class, you should probably write that down. Here we have our um, vascular bundles. These are the tubes made of xylem and phloem. Sugars are going to be transported down phloem and up through xylem. At the bottom of the uh, leaf, we have our stomates. Remember, stomates are a um, hole that uh, allows gases to be exchanged. On the sides of the stomates, the sides of the hole are guard cells that open and close depending on the conditions outside. Here's a picture of the two guard cells and the hole is the stomate, and these are on the bottom of the leaves, except for water plants like the lily pads where they have it on the top. Stomates, once again, they function in gas exchange, and these guard cells close when the conditions are dry. 
These little dots here are nuclei. They're eukaryotes. Some more modified leaves. Here we have uh, flowers or modified leaves, spines on a cacti, modified leaves, succulent like aloe vera, also modified leaves. All right, these systems are inter interdependent. They rely on each other. We have the, um, the roots receiving the sugars from the leaves and being stored there uh, until they're needed. And then the shoot system uh, depends on water to bring it back up to the leaves in order to uh, do photosynthesis. Remember, you need a supply of electrons during photosynthesis. And um, that's going to be coming from the water. That's going to be brought up from the ground. Remember that uh, most plants have a vascular system. They're either a pteridophyte, angiosperm, or gymnosperms have tubes. All right, last thing. Uh, let's go ahead and write this down. Obtaining the raw materials from the external environment. We have sunlight. Leaves are collecting that. Carbon dioxide comes in through the leaves, through the stomates, water from the roots, and nutrients from the roots. This ends part one of your notes on chapter 35.